So we just finished our video about coding and what it means with the hour of code and how many people use it. We've seen some important people, famous people, who have put it together with different companies. Do you remember what companies that we saw that they used it for? Facebook. Facebook we saw. Anybody else? Wasn't there a Microsoft guy on there? There was a Microsoft guy. Bill Gates was on there. What about somebody who's not in a coding role, but he actually studied in school? Was a basketball, player. basketball player. Do you remember his name? Uh, Chris, Chris Bosch. Yeah. Chris Bosch. And he said how important it was to know that because coding is honestly a language that we need to know because in your future, it's going to become a very common language. This unit that I created is based on um, the social studies standards about immigration to Ellis Island for fifth grade. And I also incorporated the ISTE standards um, that I'm responsible for and making sure that they have. Um, I'm making sure that they are empowered learners, that they are knowledgeable and they're using their technology and their resources safely and responsibly. Um, and also that they're collaborating globally. We're going to practice using block code with Dragon Blast. This is a game on Hour of Code that uses block coding. What I like about it is it's going to take you step by step through the process of adding code and creating a game. So you added, where did it happen on the moon? So you're being, cre you're creating where the location is for it? Okay. And then that's what I saw and then this is what what the shiny cashew is doing. We always start our computer science unit with a general um, practice and understanding of what coding is and we use Hour of Code for that and their activities. They have a lot of good activities for beginners um, and even students as they move up. Obviously not all my students are beginners so I like to give them options. Um, Dragon Blast, I like to, us to start with that because it does begin with block coding and it goes on to JavaScript and then uh, Python, which it gets more complicated as they go through the program. What are you up to now? What's your goal? Well, my goal is to get the code right mm -hmm. and get the dragon to the treasure. Okay, so it looks like you have to go through a couple of levels in order to get there. And you have a repeat button. What does that mean? The repeat button means that anything that goes in between it, it repeats itself about how many, how many times you want it to. So if you put the number five, it'll repeat itself five times. Okay, great. So it's going to repeat itself five times. Great. I have created a scenario where the curator, what's a curator in a museum? The one who like takes care of it and like t shows everybody around and stuff. Okay, the curator takes care of it. They're the manager. They make sure everything's ready to go. So the curator is looking for programmers to create kiosks for visitors at Ellis Island. Now why is Ellis Island so important? Because that's where more They immigrated to there. Um, from where? From Italy. Italy. Germany. Germany. Russia. Russia. Sweden. Sweden. Europe. Europe. That's what I was getting at. Very good. So, and I know that in your in your um, social studies class, you guys have been learning about immigration. So. I thought it would be neat if you guys created kiosks to teach about the different groups of people who came through Ellis Island and what their experience was, why did they go there. So you're going to create a program that if somebody was at Ellis Island, they could click on it and they would learn about that group, uh, that group of people. The unit is a computer science unit and applying um, the social studies unit on immigration just felt like a natural thing and I felt like I could use this content um, to have the kids completing computer science activities. I've had uh, 
programmers, app programmers. I've had um, a programmer from the military come in. I've had uh, web page designers come in, and then we looked at the HTML code on the web page, just so they could see that there really is, there's a reason for this, and that there's a need and careers that they could consider doing with it. Once we've done that, I want them to be in a career, sort of say and a programmer, and that's why I created um, the curator at the Ellis Island um, Museum wanted someone to, uh, to want, needs some kiosks for their, for their uh, museum. I had been there a couple of years ago and it just, it, I related to it and I thought, wow, yes, I remember going through and using some computer programs to look at and to understand and get more information about what we were looking at. So, I have the students complete that. What's, what I do is though, I have a rubric and I have the research laid out for them. I put everything step by step because even though we're in fifth grade, we are not, um, our research skills are not up to where they should be. And they still need guidance on what to do. So myself and the teachers will provide them with sites that we uh, find to be helpful, reliable, and we give them those. We also have textbooks that we bring from our library learning commons. Once they've completed that and they've made their choices um, and written out their script, they're ready to actually work on the program. And we use Tinker, which is a block coding program. You guys are going to interact with the Spheros for the first time. I have a program here um, that's gonna teach us about Spheros and what, um, what you have to do and how you have to think like a Sphero. Before we thought like a computer program that was going to go on a computer and now we have to think like a Sphero. They think a little bit differently so it's not it's not a different type of code it's just a different type of command that the coding needs. Okay, Just like there are different languages that people speak there are different types of coding that different robots need to speak. So first I teach the students how to use Sphero. We go through a video uh, learning how to do something basic like make a square. But you have to understand that the Sphero has to face certain ways um, in order for it to go straight ahead, that it really kind of reads the program differently. I like that switch because it makes their mindset switch too. Now, now that we've learned the program and what each of the blocks mean for coding a Sphero, you guys are going to code your Sphero to go through the maze like the one right behind me that I made. I've made um, these mazes and each of you are going to start at start and code your Sphero to go through the turns all the way to finish. Then we're also applying our map skills and um, looking at drawing out the countries and showing uh, the Sphero going from the country, whether it's Germany, Russia, and over to Ellis Island and where Ellis Island would be. That's just a physical way for them to see how they're going and it brings up conversations. I want you to make sure that everything is labeled on your map. Did you label the country that your character or, or your immigrant is coming from? Did you label Ellis Island where the um, immigrant is going to land? And then you have to create um, the route for the immigrant to take, okay? Once you have finished that, you're ready to move on and work on coding this route. So what was that like, adding two characters interacting with each other? Talk about that. There well, was like a lot of different things that we had to make. You have to click here so that this guy starts talking because we had trouble, like they would both be talking at the same time if we didn't have that. So that's why like you'll see click him and press the up arrow. So that's how they both get to talk. Okay. So I, what I like about this is your words are on long enough for us to read them. You know that you're supposed to tap it when you're moving on, so you're interacting. So by having them do the independent research and the coding, they actually have to retain the, inf the knowledge. And then that's such a basic um, expectation that I'd like to have them synthesize 
or do something that where they're applying it. I want them to m make an application with the information. I really think it's important that the kids see that what they're doing can be used anywhere and it's actually an important skill to have. But that's important knowledge to have and when you are making that um, that kiosk, you have to have those facts and you have to make sure that they're correct and that you got them from reliable sources. So they're applying their research skills by doing that and then once they do the coding piece, they're, making, they're adding it in, they're editing it, so that's how they um, are able to use all the knowledge and retain what, what they've done. So really, it's, it's not just about computer science um, and having fun, it's also about remembering and understanding. Hopefully it's a project that they'll remember and understand um, immigration to the United States and what it might have been like.